Alright guys, what's up? Today we're back with something a little special for you. I brought in a player for my team, Luke Albertini. What's up guys? Uh, and we actually got a new boot. This is uh, my personal boot. I bought this. It came in uh, a couple days ago. So, without further ado, the new Mercurial Superfly. So, start. Got the bag. Hyper Punch. Super bright with the uh, black. Nike branding in the front and back, like all this. And then we have the boots. Luke actually grabbed a pair as well, so he's gonna take his out and we'll take a look at these, get into a little bit more detail, talk about the colors, and then uh, I'll just give a little bit of on feet. So this is continuing with the Magista colorways, the uh, Hyper Punch, the gold, and the black. Obviously gonna have the Hyper Punch pink, super, super bright. Uh, not really red, but definitely more of like a mangoish pink color for the upper. Um, it's gonna go all the way around, all the way around. And then you're gonna have the volt black and gold accents on the Nike swoosh on the front of the foot, and then back around the heel, you're gonna have another Nike hit right there. You have the yellow kind of woven through underneath. That's gonna peek through to give it kind of a um, yellowish background to it, so it's a little bit of a highlight throughout the hyper punch. Hope you guys can see on camera how it's got that yellowing behind the hyper punch. Uh, from about here down, same thing on the back. Um, so this, the dynamic fit collar is going to be the straight hyper punch, but uh, around here you're going to have that yellow speckling behind it, which is pretty cool. So the hyper punch laces are going to have the light speckling as well with that yellow behind it. Um, really thin laces, I'll talk more about that when I give you the on feet opinion. Uh, on the bottom you have the carbon fiber outsole with uh, volt hits and the studs on the inside of the foot as well as the outside of the two studs on the heel. We'll talk more about stud, config stud configuration later. And then on the inside of the dynamic fit collar, you're going to have that bright bolt, uh, which will actually show through when you stretch this out a bit. Starting at the top of the boot and working our way down, we've got the dynamic fit collar, uh, which is that fly knit material. It's going to be really stretchy. Uh, it's got two layers of fly knit pretty much. You've got the hyper punch on the outsole, which is backed by that bolt on the inside, like I mentioned. Let's see there. It's going to be really stretchy, you're going to have a bit of support down the back just to give it a little bit of rigidity, but it's not uh, its not going to do too much for you just to keep the shape just a little bit. And then that dynamic fit collar is going to right into the tongue and serve as the tongue, uh, connecting that one piece upper uh, all the way through. The, the tongue or uh, kind of middle part of this boot uh, is also that fly knit material, so it's going to come down and keep it everything together across the front. Uh, and it's also... Because it's that fly material, it's going to be really stretchy and not really fold over as much as the paper tends. If you guys watch my video on that, you'll know that that was one of my biggest gripes about it, where uh, when you tied the boot up, it would fold over and be really uncomfortable. Uh, and this has definitely fixed it with that fly material just because of the way it stretches. Uh, as we work our way down again, it goes from that fly material into the coated Nike skin upper. Uh, so underneath this Nike skin is going to be the fly knit, uh, making up the whole entire boot to get that sock-like sock -like feel. Uh, but over that you're going to have the Nike skin uh, coating, which is just like the Hyper Venoms, that kind of waxy finish almost uh, to give you a better touch on the ball. It's micro textured as you come around the front of the toe. Uh, you can feel that where you, I'm not sure, it's, I don't think it's going to come up on camera, but you can feel that it's got a little bit of texture, so it gives you a little bit of a uh, better feel on the ball. In addition to that, as with all top end Nike boots, you're going to get the all conditions control as well over that Nike skin to give you better grip and wet and dry conditions on the ball. So also woven into that fly knit upper, you're gonna have these Brio cables. They look really similar to the fly knit cables that you found on the old Superflies, uh, but these are actually a little bit different. They're woven right into the upper. They wrap around the top of the lace holes just like the uh, fly wire did. Um, and they connect to the bottom as well to give you a little bit more, uh, more lateral support. Um, as well as when you tie it up, it really pulls the whole boot around your foot and really gives you a really nice fit. So let's talk about the carbon fiber bottom. We bring Luke in, a bit of an expert on this. So with the old Nike uh, Superflies, they did a three-layer uh, carbon fiber bottom, but a lot of the pro players had complaints, so they changed it to a two-layer, and that just makes the cleat a lot more flexible than the old Superflies. Carbon fiber obviously is still going to be a very uh, kind of tense material. So you're going to get a lot of really good acceleration with these when you press. It's going to uh, be really responsive and really snap back to your foot uh, to repel you forward. 
going into the stud configuration, as with the Vapor 10s, they went back to the four stud design in the back rather than the two stud design to give it a little bit more stability. Um, they've changed around the front to give you that little little circle of uh, weighted studs here to give you 360 degree motion off the front of your foot when you're pivoting. The insole of most materials is going to be pretty basic. Um, it's going to be one single layer of perforated uh, foam. You have the bolt collar on the front, just plain on the back with the black mercurial branding on the heel. So that was a quick review of some of the features of the new Mercurial Superfly. Now I'll give you guys some detailed shots, and then I'll let you take a look and play test of these, and I'll let you know how they perform on the field. Just bounce. Um, going back to the carbon fiber bottom, it's going to provide a lot of support, a lot of stability, and a lot of uh, the kind of aggressive propulsion uh, when you flex out because it's going to, because it's so rigid compared to like kind of the regular uh, fiber nylon, um, it's going to give you a lot of support forward, which is I'm a really big fan of. As I mentioned before, we've got the four stars in the back rather than the two now. Um, Personally, I like the two. Uh, I told you, I tell you guys every time that I was skeptical when they first announced it a couple years ago. Uh, but I really became a huge fan of uh, those two studs in the back because it really felt like nothing was there. But um, professional players have requested that they go back to the four stud design. Uh, so now they're back to that for a little bit more stability. Still, you're not going to feel any stud pressure. I so played on grass yesterday with these actually. Um, extremely comfortable on both turf and grass. The three stud circle up here. Um, I actually didn't think I would notice much, but I do notice a little bit of my pivot. I had a lot of support pretty much in every direction, uh, which is always the purpose of a 360 degrees design. Uh, but I did think that was pretty cool because I didn't think I was going to notice uh, that added stability up front. Hopefully you guys can see on camera that it's a little bit different material. It's not the fly knit. It's actually that, that kind of synthetic or real leather, whatever it is, that goes up the back of your foot. Um, which leads to my one only complaint about this boot is it digs into your foot a bit. Um, I'm a predominantly right-footed player, and I had a little bit of a blister on the back of my heel, kind of right on my Achilles uh, from this digging in yesterday, and it was noticeably painful when I was playing. So I think just from that, the flexing of your, your toe down and kind of bringing it back uh, to lock your ankle and then bring it back up to run, and just that, that constant process of going down and up. I don't know if you guys can see on camera how it's a little bit wavy up the back. Uh, so it's a little bit broken in unevenly, so in that bit of rigidity in it is going to kind of dig into your ankle a little bit. Um, but after my first couple days wearing them, that's my only problem. Usually when you break into super high rate, you're going to get lots of blisters on your toes, your heels, whatever. Um, but there's only that one small one on the back of my right heel, kind of right on my Achilles. You guys know I'd usually wear a size 9 in Vapors, uh, 9.5 in Hypervenoms usually. Um, and I grab, I grab these in a size 9. So usually I wear an 11 and a half, but for these I got an 11, and I probably should have gotten an 11 and a half. These are pretty small, but nothing that can. Yeah, I would say these fit pretty true to size, uh, at least as far as the mercurial line goes. Um, they're going to be that little bit narrower fit, but um, definitely because of that flying upper, it's going to be stretchy. It's going to be uh, able to form to pretty much any foot size, um, unless you are extremely, extremely wide foot. I know. One thing you guys are all wondering is what does it feel like with this uh, kind of ankle collar? Um, it honestly just feels like you're wearing a regular boot with an ankle sock underneath, like double socking almost. It's not restricted at all. It's extremely, extremely stretchy all around. So that's going to be uh, definitely not an issue. I know some people were concerned about that, but that's not a problem. Uh, I'm sure you guys, if you're watching this, you're aware of uh, how much these boots cost. They come in at $275, so they're made pretty pricey. Um, 
but in comparison to, pre to previous Superflies, those came in at uh, $400, and also the Nike Elite Series, which utilized the carbon fiber bottoms, came in at $300. That, that's correct, right? Uh, 300 for, yeah. Yeah, so they came in at $300. So um, $275 for a Superfly boot, uh, full fly knit material with the carbon fiber bottom, really isn't all that expensive. It's definitely worth the purchase. Um, they can get you money's worth. Yeah. The Nike skin, um, if any of you guys have, any, have ever had experience with the hypervenoms, you're going to know that they're really durable. Um, you know, boots are always prone to separation right here, separation right here, just in that constant flexing. Um, and my hypervenoms, which I've had for probably about a year now, um, are just, just barely starting to tear right there. Uh, really not even much of a separation issue um, because that Nike skin is, is really, really resistant to tearing and stretching. You got solid detailed shots, you got the quick review, you got the overview of the colors. Um, the play got, test. got the play test. Hopefully you guys saw everything you want in this video. Um, if there's anything more you guys want to see, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll just have more and more opinions on these as I play in them for weeks. And uh, I'll be able to, if you guys want another video in a couple weeks, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, I'll get that to you as soon as possible, as soon as I have uh, more experience with these. Um, other than that, as always, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.